Pat, do you have any thoughts about, so we're recording one week prior to the initial college football playoff rankings release, yeah. and there is this huge debate. It's, it's on my channel every day between Oregon and Ohio State. Oregon won the game. Ohio State looks to be the better team. Oregon plays in a conference that looks worse and worse by the week. Ohio State will at some point, otherwise the, the conversation's null and void, obviously, if they lose. So if they continue to win, their resume is only going to shoot through the roof and right. completely trump uh, Oregon. So just um, your, your thoughts about uh, what the committee may be showing us um, this initial release, granted, if Ohio State gets the win this weekend. Yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting to see this first rank for a number of reasons. But starting with what you said there about Ohio State and Oregon, I was talking to an Ohio State fan last late last week uh, about that situation. They were saying, you know, they you know they just hope Oregon loses to kind of get them out of the way. But I think at the same time, if Oregon ends up having a bad second half of the season, that loss doesn't look as good. You can also make the argument in 2014, Ohio State lost to a Virginia Tech team that turned out to be pretty poor and still made the playoff and won the national championship. I think right now, if you're Ohio State, you have to just focus on what you're doing. Um, and, and I get the Oregon argument. And like I said, it will be interesting to see where both teams are ranked in that initial college football playoff ranking. But I think Ohio State has kind of put that out of the minds of, of at least the voters, obviously, in the AP and coaches poll. If, if the Buckeyes go out and beat Penn State handily this weekend, or, or even just, just a good win, I think that the Buckeyes will be right in that 4-5 spot. Um, now, whether that is fair to Oregon, I don't know. I think that the Ducks probably need to look better. Let's remember, it was only a seven-point game. As bad as some of the things looked in Columbus, it was only a seven-point loss. Um, and, and so, you know, I think that that will be taken into account. And I'll be interested to see how the committee uh, members that speak afterwards to us kind of evaluate and, and, and justify if they do have the Buckeyes higher. They always seem to have some response ready. But I think there's some other interesting things, too, just while we're on the topic of the college football playoff. Where is Cincinnati ranked? I, I think that will be interesting. They've been number two in the AP and coaches poll, and, and that's obviously an in-state team with, with, um, with the Buckeyes. Ryan Day was asked about Cincinnati. Luke Fickle, former Ohio State head coach, who knows a lot of people here. There's a lot of people on his staff that are former Buckeyes. So uh, I think it'll be very interesting to see because we've not seen the group of five team make it. Is that a team that could potentially be a roadblock for Ohio State? You know, if they win out, and, and obviously they struggled a little bit this past weekend, but – it, it'll be interesting to see that. It'll be interesting to see where Oklahoma ranks because the Sooners obviously are undefeated, but these last few weeks have, have certainly raised some questions, almost, you know, falling behind to Kansas. I guess they didn't almost lose. They pulled away in the second half. So I think it's going to be one of the more interesting first rankings we've seen. And it's always interesting to see where the committee has things. And it's always different than what the AP and coaches poll say. And, and that all kind of starts to work itself out. But I do think it'll be interesting I think that it'll tell us a lot about what the committee thinks about Ohio State and coming back and then what they've looked like recently. Where does Oregon and the Pac-12 stand in things? Uh, the Big 12 and, and Oklahoma, and if, if Oklahoma's winning is good enough, and, and same thing with Cincinnati. So I'll be really intrigued next Tuesday. I think uh, you know it's, it's probably as intrigued as I've been going into a rankings other than the final one since this all started back in 2014. On one hand, I believe that anybody who goes undefeated should be in a playoff, but that's if we have enough playoff spots. We don't have Correct. enough playoff spots. So, you know, if we had eight or 12, then yeah, come on in. You're undefeated. And especially with Cincinnati, all due credit to them, they went out and scheduled Indiana and Notre Dame. Right. At the same time, my goodness, um, Cincinnati's hanging on this Notre Dame, and I'm not talking about them specifically, but backers of Cincinnati are hanging on this Notre Dame win. Like, we checked off Notre Dame. That's all we need to do as long as we win the rest of the games where other teams across the country have to check off like five teams like that. Right. Uh, and it's just, it's not an equitable situation at all, but it will be fascinating because Cincinnati's resume is going to do nothing but continue to drop, 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 drop. Yep. And the mentality of a lot of people is kind of like once you mark your spot, like if you're Cincinnati and you're number three, well, then you stay there regardless of what happens. I don't look at it that way. Right. I think the, the resume needs to be reevaluated every week. Well, and that's what the college football playoff committee is supposed to do. And, and that's what they tell us that they do is every week is a clean slate and they reevaluate these teams from scratch. So if you're doing that and 
you, know, you certainly have to take into account that they did go and beat an Indiana team. They did beat Notre Dame. Um, but those teams' strengths will also be evaluated each week. And, and so the Indiana game obviously doesn't carry as much weight now that the Hoosiers have, have lost, what is it, four games, five games now. Um, and, you know, obviously there you have a head-to-head comparison between Ohio State and Indiana um, also playing each other. So, you know, I, I, that's why I think this ranking will be interesting. But then it, it's interesting every week, and obviously they make a show of it and whatnot. But this one will be interesting. I think if, if there are some losses, how teams move around. But ultimately the one that, that matters and the one that I think people, you know, should, should get worked up about potentially is, is that last one when it decides who makes the college football playoff. Absolutely. And I've said many times, and you're certainly aware of this, of course, that what's fascinating is that Ohio State, other than 2019 and 2020, as they filled that, what, three line in 2020, but the first five years of this, they were the team of controversy every year. They were on the four five line every year. Interesting. Yep. All right, Pat, we appreciate you stopping by again. Catch uh, Pat's work at Bucknuts 247 Sports. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, enjoy the game. Absolutely. Thank you.